Oh, right, I'm sure there's a few of you who are recognising this iconic backdrop. Oh my lord, oh, I am seriously buzzing. We have got an almighty challenge ahead of us for this session. It's got a mad mission to run Wolfenstein. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I think I might have bitten off more than I can chew it. Absolutely buzzing. Exciting. I'm not complaining, it's fully scaled. <laughs> we'll take that. Contemplating my sanity. Well, check him out for a mega old crusty Wolfenstein warrior. Been at it a long time fishing and to turn up here and it still feel like the very first time going fishing is something proper special. Yo, yo, yo. Right, I'm sure there's a few of you who are recognising this iconic backdrop. Yes, that's right. Today we are at the famous Wolfhamstow Reservoirs, an absolutely amazing venue, really, considering where it is. I feel like, you know, you're in the concrete jungle, but within a little oasis inside of it. Um, yeah, it's a huge complex of lakes here. I absolutely love the place. Been here quite a lot of times over the years. Um, I think the first time I visited here, I was about 13, maybe 14 years old, um, many, many moons ago. I was knee high to a grasshopper back then. <laughs> and actually, I remember walking up onto this lake here, which is the Lockwood, um, trickiest one on the complex, 90 acres of water and not many carp in it. And back then, it used to have some really good fish in it. And in those days, carp anglers were a little bit more secretive and uh, a little bit moodier in general. <laughs> and I can remember walking up onto this lake, seeing a guy and saying, hello mate, how are you getting on? You seen anything? He said, uh, yeah, I've seen the birds, I've seen the clouds, seen the sky, and then turned back around, look at the water and didn't say a word. <laughs> so I took the hint and uh, wandered back to my swim. But yeah, as a 13 year old, I think he would have been a little bit more friendly, eh? <laughs> Anyway, we have got an almighty challenge ahead of us for this session. I am going to be joined by Alan Blair, the terminator of carp fishing, and I'm definitely going to need his skills for this session because we're setting ourselves a pretty crazy target, and that is to catch one carp from every lake on the complex. Now, there's eight different lakes on the complex, and we've also got the Copper Mill Stream too. So, loads to go at. Um, obviously, it gives you a real good idea of what the venue is about. You get to see a little bit of, of every lake, hopefully. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not super confident with this one, uh, especially with the conditions we're faced with. We've got like upper 20s, not a lot of wind. Um, however, we have got a little advantage on our side, and that is that we're allowed to fish at night. Now, normally this is a days only complex. However, the first weekend of the month, each month, then people are allowed to fish night. So, you know, we're not doing something that no one can do ever, but we have got the luxury of being able to roam around at night when it's going to be a little bit cooler, when the carp are likely to be moving around a bit more. Um, so yeah, that hopefully is going to be our edge. Now, with regards to a plan, haven't really got one. I've come up to Lockwood to start with just because the wind's going to be blowing down here tomorrow afternoon and you know, it's a big lake and wind is everything on these waters. So I'm going to trickle a little bit of bait out here. Not a lot. Obviously, I don't want to spoil anyone else's fishing. Um, I don't think many people have been fishing up here lately. Um, but yeah, just maybe a tin of corn and a couple of handfuls of boilies just scattered around this area here. And then if it is nice and uh, if, well, if there is a nice chop blowing down here and it looks likely, then it's something that I can drop back onto, be it for tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon, if it's looking good. Um, aside from that, I've got another little spot just on one of the other lakes that I'm going to trickle a bit of bait into. On the high there's a pipe there. Pipes always attract carp. So yeah, trickle a bit into that and uh, give myself an option to drop back onto. Then after that, I'm going to go around to Lake 2 um, because there's a couple of little spots there where I think there should be a chance of a quick bite. And a quick bite is essential with the task that we've got ahead of us. And then after, I think I'm going to head up to the West Warwick. Now the West Warwick is a venue I've not actually fished before. Sounds like it's going to be one of the trickiest ones, not including this of course, um, but still could be very hard to get one out of there in 24 hours. So I'm going to try and get one out of the one, uh, sorry, the two, then pop up to the Warwick and hopefully this evening might get a sign or two um, to, to drop onto, but I'll prep up some spots to check tomorrow as well. So uh, yeah, sorry for all the jazz hands <laughs> and the t-shirt. I know this is not a very uh, carpy attire, but in this heat I needed something a little bit lighter with a little bit more airflow. So uh, 
Yeah, the microphone's not doing it any favours either, is it? Right, I'm gonna get some sun cream on, get these spots topped, well not topped up, prepped up, and then uh, get on a mission, because we've got about 48 hours ahead of us. Alan's getting here this evening, and uh, as I say, it's a tall order, but keep the faith. Keep the faith. Let's do it. Well, it is absolutely scorchio, <laughs> but I'm not complaining, although I am sweating. Last time I sweated like this, I was in a club in Ibiza many moons ago. Right, so I've jumped on the two. Um, I've got a rod ready to go, spinner rig, IB, standard kind of Wolfram Stow tactics. It's always worked for me in the past down here. Um, I've got the, the old bushwhacker out ready to go as well. So I'm just gonna push that out to where these snags are. Um, I've seen a bit of fizzing out there, I've not seen any fish, but these snags are in the shade and it's blistering hot, so I reckon there's a good chance there might be a fish or two around, even though the wind's pushing down the other end. I'm going to give it a couple of hours and hopefully we can get a, a quickish bite out of this corner. It is a little bit savage, there's some nasty snags around there, so one rod, got to be sitting on it and um, yeah, hopefully we can do the do. Do the donkey do, <laughs> as the old Dell boy would say. There's also a pipe over there, which I haven't checked yet, but it might be a bit overgrown. But it's another place where they like to sit. Well, it does tend to do the smaller fish, but we'll take a stocky. Stockies count. Right, let's do this. Oh, I'm happy with that to be honest. Didn't feel quite right, you know. I like, felt the drop, and there was just a bit of a donk just before it got to the bottom. Obviously, there's a few snags in this area, so it might be that the rig is sitting really badly. But I think rather than make more disturbance now, I'll just give it 20 minutes just in case it is all right because there was quite a lot of bubbling going on there when I got here and that doesn't seem to be going on now, so I reckon it was fish. Like I say, because that area is in full shade as well, I can imagine there's definitely going to be the odd one about. Right, well, I've given it about 25 minutes here. I've not had any knocks on the line. Um, I'm not massively happy, like I said, because of the the drop and the branch on the way down. And also it looks like there's quite a lot of branches well away from the trees. So to be honest with you, it looks pretty hairy. Um, the last time I fished it, it seems like there's a few different branches since then. So I think what I might do is just put a little bit of bait in here, just a couple of handfuls, and then go around and see if I can get a bait in that pipe around the corner. Cause that's the spot that I've had sort of fish from quite quickly in the past. Um, and then obviously potentially drop on this one uh, tomorrow morning or something if I don't get one over there. Um, but we've got to go with the best case scenario, haven't we? Best case scenario is go around there, catch one quickly and go up West Warwick and see when we find them up there. Seriously buzzing. Um, been at it a long time fishing and to turn up here and it still feel like the very first time going fishing is something proper special. Uh, at Walthamstow, been here once for a look around before, nothing more than an hour I spent here. Don't know why I've never fished it, I just don't know. Joe's invited me out 
and uh, typical Joe, big challenge on the cards, wants to catch one from every lake, which I think is great, it gives us uh, something to sort of aim towards. Um, I went to see Alfie Russell, really good to see him, um, he's fishing the lower, I might get these a bit confused, but yeah, I think he's on the lower, I went to see Alf, had a, had a hug and a chat and a catch up, bid farewell, I was on a push bike, Supposed to go back to the motor to come onto this side of the complex and found a load of them on the bottom of the lower. So I ended up fishing there for about an hour. Absolutely buzzing. Like, geese were a problem, uh, gulls were a problem. But I had this little window where I got them taking mixes and uh, yeah, fluffed a chance off the surface. All good ones as well. So that was really exciting. Come back, met up with Mike, who's going to, for his sins, follow me around for the next 36 hours. And uh, we're now on the, the side I'm supposed to be on because Joe sort of set me the challenge of catching one from the one the free and the copper mill. Driven up here and um, had a little look, almost about to turn around and, and walk the entire stretch the correct direction. And I was just like, nah, I just want to go a little bit further and have a look. Anyway, lo and behold, I've gone in there, this big building and that, some concrete, looked over the edge. They're all in there milling around. <laughs> so I've knocked up some gear. I've grabbed the ever faithful ball of maggots. So before I stove it in with a couple of handfuls of mix, I'm just going to flip this ball of maggots out just in case one takes it. But yeah, proper excited. Crept round onto here, they're still about, but I'm just pestering them more and more. Can't believe I missed one, man. But first cast, ball of maggots, took it straight away, but no hesitation. Um, and yeah, they're middling about. But I'm, the more casts I make, the more I'm spooking them, the more I'm putting them on edge, I'll give it another 10, 15 minutes. At least I've got a bit of bait in now. That's, that's a good thing. There's a bit of bait down there. Just walked up the side of the number one. <clears throat> Didn't see any more carp in the copper mill. The light's really bad. It's like looking at a peat bottom. Everything's just black. A um, couple of anglers up there. Quick hello to them. Um, and yeah, the number two backs on to me. Uh, this is the number one. But to be fair, like, I've fluffed two or three chances now. Um, it's getting later and later. And I almost feel, even though it's not what Joe asked me to do. He did end saying, look, just find some fish and fish for him to actually go back to the lower. Um, I was really happy there. It's only because Mike sort of turned up, went to see him, and then I felt I should really have a look at the rest of the complex. It, it's been great. I, I've learned some stuff already. I've got some bait established on the copper mill where there's definitely a number of carp present, so they can be left in peace now. Yes, I could jump on here for the night, but I've seen nothing yet. I might give it another 20 minutes, but my heart is telling me, head back to the lower, where I know those fish were on that particular margin. We give it 10, 15 minutes here. Well, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think I might have bit enough more than I can chew it. It's a big old slap, this lake. Deep. Um, obviously, it is a bowl, so although it's a similar size to long reach, and with a similar stock levels, um, there's no features as such not sort of, you know, big bars and plateaus and that kind of thing. So I think, you know, it's, it shouldn't be as tricky because ultimately it's just about being on the fish. These fish don't get a lot of pressure, so they should be relatively catchable. And even though there's probably only about 50 in here, them 50, you know, probably hang around together a fair amount, I imagine. So if you can get in that right acre, you might have 20 fish in that acre or so. Um, I was looking on Google Earth before I come here and it did look pretty tasty up this end. We're right at the far end of it where the northerly wind blows which is trickling in here at the moment and I've been sitting here for well wandering about for the last sort of 
40 minutes or so and I've not seen anything yet but it feels like this will be where they are just because you know it's that whole when you've got nothing something is everything and it's not a big wind but it is a wind and it is a new wind as well so I think there's a good chance some fish would have pushed down here on this. I was hoping to find some spots in the, mo in the margins should I say um, but the margins are fully weed choked and it looks like there's no spots to be seen certainly around this end so yeah I was hoping to put some bait in and keep an eye on them but it doesn't look like it's going to happen looks like it's going to be all about fishing the other side of the weed which I imagine is going to be in deeper water just probably the bottom of the drop off um, and yeah I'm not too keen on doing that because of the line angle but obviously it needs must and I think I might actually fish from the damn wall and fish across to that the edge of that weed from this side so that way I can let my line slacken off and know that the line around the rig is on the deck and I'll probably do the same on this side obviously you know it's a long damn wall but I can cast my rods and then bring them back to close enough that um, you know I'm not going to be too far away from them so yeah I think I should probably get a move on. I could sit here for hours waiting to see a sign, but this feels right. And, you know, whilst my rods are out, I can then keep an eye on the water. I'm not gonna get everything else out. In fact, to be honest with you, I've hardly got anything with me. I didn't bring a bivvy, so hopefully it's not gonna rain. It's, it's not meant to, but you never know when the weather's been like this, do you? Um, I have got a bed chair, so yeah, when it comes to it, I will be getting a few hours sleep. But I think the key is gonna be eyes on the water as much as possible and listening. Um, you know, location, 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 the old famous saying. That's what it's all about. But there are some super cool carp in here actually. Um, yeah, they've stocked a few in here from another reservoir over the years. And yeah, they're, they're pretty fish. And also, it doesn't really get fished. So hopefully, you know, if you can get on them, it shouldn't be too hard to catch. Right, let's get some rods out. Tail sticking out. <laughs> oh, exciting. I can't definitely feel in that sun. Well, would you believe it? Wind was trickling down here, saw a fish in the weed, and then the wind's just turned around. It's now blowing that way. What's all that about? <laughs> I've just checked the weather forecast, and it's actually not going to be doing much at all tonight. Um, so, I'm happy enough here for now. Like I say, seeing that one in the weed was, oh, there he is, he's still there. Trouble is, it's quite thick weed. And I might be able to plop a bit of bread on top of it. But the weed looks like it's kind of all over the surface and the fish is just underneath it. So there's not like any holes in it. I'm sure Alan would have a trick up his sleeve. Um, but yeah, the fact that they're in the area is, is good enough for me. Um, I've gone in with minimal disturbance, just flick hook baits out. One of them I put like about six or seven boilies around. Um, but yeah, I just thought that would do for now. Got another couple of hours of daylight, and then just before it gets dark, I reckon I'll bushwhack them out just past that weed because it felt like sort of it went down about sort of eight foot, I'd say, but nice crack down just the other side of that weed there. So, although I'm going to have a poor line angle. I think that's the place to be. And like I say, if I just put them out with a bushwhacker, handful of bait, enough for a bite, um, without any disturbance. Oh, there's another one. Oh, yeah, they're definitely around here. I've got floaters in the car. That one's just swimming out of the weed. It's that time of the evening when you expect them to start moving out. Isn't it? Yeah, I've got floaters in the car, but oh, there's so many gulls around, I just think they'll end up spooking the fish off. Where's he going? Right, anyway, as they drift out this weed, what I'm hoping is that they drop down, see their muck baits, and bang, we have a fish. I mean, if we could get out of here before it gets dark, that'd be a massive result, but I think that's asking a lot. <laughs> I think we're gonna be here till the morning for sure. 
but like I say, you know, I've got an amazing view from here. There's fish about. Um, if I get my rigs in place nicely, I think in the morning, that's when I'm going to have a good chance of getting a bite. I can imagine them drifting out into the sort of uh, deeper water tonight, away from the weed. But I reckon they're going to be back first thing. And if my rigs are presented nicely, should be in with a chance. He says. <laughs> in the light beautiful beautiful sunset but gonna do it in just a nick of time let's get the rods out um, while still being able to see i'm actually gonna cast across to the far bank over a big sort of concrete sluice go around there and lower the rig in and then try and drop a back lead thereafter just to try and pin the line down a little bit um, fluorocarbon straight through on the reels uh, it's river fishing you know they are going to go i'm sure of it um, 35 pound arm link hook links nice and short big heavy lead slip the arrangement and yet it feels like once i get the rods in it should be a quick bite there's every possibility i'll still be sitting here at eight o'clock in the morning going why hasn't it gone yet why hasn't it gone yet but yeah that's the plan get the rods out nice and discreetly and um yeah get the bed chair out have a bit of food maybe nick an hour sleep um, but yeah i've got to keep moving basically because if i do get one from here we're on the move Rods out about spooking them is another matter. Might try. Made the ground so hard. Uh, yeah, I see two in here. One's coming along the front here. I can see bubbles coming up on that spot over there. Excited. And they're down here again now. Look, Andy. Fucking hell, what? Definitely not spooked. <laughs> this one's gone now, which is good. I can get this in. Still down there, man. I get the feeling they've eaten it all. They certainly have it. Right, so the plan is, so I'll get a half decent line lay and can put some tension on the whole setup. I'm gonna pop a back lid on and try and drop it at the bottom of this gravel slope. I was just about to say to camera, it really should be a minute bite, but I know what these things are like. It can actually take all night, if they even happen at all. So to have had the bite in a minute, yes. It's actually a really small one. I'm not complaining, it's fully scaled. <laughs> we take that. We will take that. Right, I've got to keep minimal, minimal disturbance because as much as I should believe in, I want one more crack at these. I see some really nice fish down here. One big common earlier. Oh, it's a mega one. Proper. <laughs> Fluff 
chances. I got one, my first one from Stoke Harp, from the Copper Mill stream. Oh, it was so exciting, man, seeing them down there feeding. Yeah, rods went out perfectly, sort of kind of hand placed them. Well, I didn't, I threw the rig in the water. Um, and yeah, a proper mega mirror. Uh, should really be getting on the move, but I'm not. The vehicle's just here. I'm gonna get my rods sorted out for the duration of my stay here. Prepare a couple of zigs, get a couple of choddy rods set up. And yeah, leave the rods out here for a little bit longer, just in case there's a chance of one more. If I don't get another bite within the next couple of hours, I'm definitely gonna go on the number three. Uh, baited a pipe earlier. Hopefully there'll be a few fish knocking around there in a few hours time. Epic. I managed to get a bit of food down me and just got on to tying the first chod rig. And it went again. <laughs> I kind of knew it would. Um, and I, as a result of still not being set up, it means I am going to replace the rod and hopefully there's one more bite to be had. I just had a real quick look with the moonshine. They didn't like it, man. They backed off a little bit further downstream and I couldn't see those better fish that I was seeing earlier. But yeah, I'll take beautiful carp like this out of a, a stunning, stunning river. However, I know Joe will be like, no, Al, come on, get going. So yeah, another hour, I'll be all prepared. We get packed up here and move on to the number three. Epic. <laughs> morning well after walking around all day yesterday and then knowing that I was probably going to do a similar thing today I thought well I'm not expecting anything tonight my traps are set ready for the morning I'll just get a few hours sleep so I'm fully charged up ready for today unfortunately the moon had other ideas full moon was out in force and Joey could not sleep all night long, just laying there, trying, but I wasn't able to. Um, so yeah, I gave up about 4 a.m. It's now about 4.45, I reckon. Um, just getting light, been watching the water since then, not seeing any signs, but the wind is now blowing back down this end again. So I'm very hopeful that fish are gonna start turning up here or showing down here in the next hour or so. Well, I'm sort of praying they will, to be honest. I think I might just have to gruel it out on here. I'll let Alan run round and catch him from all the other venues, because I'm sure he will. He'll be working like an absolute machine. Um, and I might just slog it out on here and try and catch one. Could happen, um, but it might not. You know, as I said, it's not an easy water and there's not many fish in here and it is big, so. I know I'm making all my excuses, but I'm sure today if I can find them, I should have a chance of catching one. But for now, more coffee is required. Psst, psst, psst. Fucking crack foxes, get out of here. Psst. They just don't care. Hey, you hard. Good news and some bad news. Bad news first, I've lost a microphone, which uh, I've been walking up and down this bank for the last sort of 45 minutes looking for. No sign of it anywhere, gutted. A hundred odd quid to replace, I reckon. Anyway, the good news is <laughs> I've actually seen one. I was just on the phone to Alan and one stuck its head out, just out here, just the other side of that weed. Same sort of distance I'm fishing, but a couple of odd lengths to the right of it. They got buzz. I was just sitting here thinking they've got to turn up, surely, with this wind. Um, but yeah, I think as, the, as it gets warmer this morning, they're probably, you know, there's no reason why they shouldn't come back and into this weed. 
and I spent a little bit of time last night in the darkness with a sea lead plucking out a little hole just down here. Um, I put a couple of spoms of mixture on that. So I'm quite happy with that. Just put a rig on there. And that's in about probably about five, four and a half foot of water, I'd say. Um, a little gravel spot. And like I say, there's no other spots around there. So if they come into that weed, they've got to drop down onto that. I'm almost certain of it. And I've just seen two magpies. So uh, yeah, apart from losing the microphone, I'm feeling fairly confident um, that something is going to happen. Alan, obviously, he had that result out of the river last night. Mega result, that. Um, sounds like he's on fish at the moment as well on the one, so I reckon it won't be long before he bags one out of there. Like I say, hopefully Alan can just go and do all the other lakes and I'll just worry about getting one out of here. <laughs> no, ideally it would be amazing to get one out of here in the next couple of hours. Then I can get on my toes myself and uh, yeah, try and get them other lakes ticked off the list with him. Yeah, it's a glorious morning. No grumbles here. Just a carp would be nice. What you got for his universe? Big black mid-30 linear. That'd do, wouldn't it? <laughs> Nothing more to report. Did a few hours up on the number three. Um, yeah, got the rods out, or got into the sleep system about half two. Um, was back up again this morning at half five. Luckily, I had a double beat to wake me up, otherwise I'd have definitely carried on sleeping. Uh, was shattered. And yeah, I woke up and kind of knew it wasn't the place to be. It just felt dead. There was all black scum on the surface of the water. I was hardly getting a drop last night. It's very, very shallow. Couldn't see any fish on the pipe, just didn't feel right. Just didn't feel right. So rather than waste any more time there, immediately put the sleep system in the moat and I've come around here onto the number one. Now, I don't know if you can hear in the background, but there's a few carp sloshing about down here. Um, before setting up on the number and another, before setting up on the number three, I come around here, put a little bit of squid flake in, put a few 15 millers in. Um, I've come back this morning, the fish aren't in the area where I put the bait, but they are in the vicinity. Um, I don't know whether they've come in and cleared me out. There is a strong possibility that could be the case in sort of three or four hours, or whether they're not actually really munching, they're just down here. Uh, time will tell. I've got two trolleys out there. I'll put 15, 20 baits around each rod. Um, I've just had my first line out. The fish are still showing. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully we can nick a quick bite here. I have just had a little look at the copper mill. Carp everywhere, man. Like, I really want to ring Joe to say, Joe, can we just can this shoot and just do a really nice piece on the Coffin Hill stream? <laughs> um, and I might do that still. We'll see how the morning goes up until lunchtime. But yeah, there's definitely fish to be caught in the river. Um, yeah, that's where we're up to. I've had a coffee. I'm ready to go again. Joe's not caught anything, but he has just seen the show, so he's really excited. Yeah. Let's go on mad missions around Walthamstow. Well, as I mentioned, it was a full moon last night. Or maybe it's tonight, actually. It certainly looked like it last night, to be fair. Um, but yeah, and as well as them being the peak days, you also get peak hours within those days um, based on this Solinar theory. And the Solinar theory is a funny one, really. It's um, a guy studied like, a stupid amount of fish catchers and looked at all the different variables. And the most two consistent variables were the movements of the sun and the moon. And from that, he made a chart, um, which you can actually get via an app. Um, well, there's multiple different apps, actually. And basically, I was just looking at that, and we've got a peak time coming up from 12.30 till 3.30. And although I really want to get on my toes and go and find some carp, I've got to sit on me. <laughs> sit on my hands for now because I've just, well, about an hour ago I saw another one. It was over that other side there, but sort of about 90 yards along the bank, but kind of jumped out that way and looked like it was heading down this vicinity. I didn't want to just launch a pop-up across to it because that would have potentially, you know, mean that there was a line going all the way across that bay and any fish coming towards that bay might have spooked off that line. So I thought I'm better off just sitting back um, with the traps that I've got set and hopefully they're going to move in. 
Um, spoke to Alan, sounds like he's having a fun time, having lots of missions around the place. Uh, but yeah, obviously you've seen what's going on there, so I don't need to talk about that. But I'm going to keep plugging away here, I'm going to sit through this peak period. Um, well, I'll give it to at least two and then see what's happening. I'll keep you posted. Come on, what you got for us? Please, I keep just thinking about one of these big, dark, lovely mirrors in the bottom of my net. Um, keep the buzz alive. There are some really cool ones in here. There used to be a lot of big ones in here, actually. It was quite a good 30s water many years ago. Um, a lot of people used to come up here in the winter. God, it's a brutal place to be in the winter. One bleep. Go on in. I need more than that. Had a little look at the two, couldn't find any. Lower, higher, grabbed the barrow, grabbed everything basically for the day, including a bit of food, some water, suntan lotion. <clears throat> I'm out now. Um, I've got to stop flitting though. Um, I found a group of fish up here on the wind on the higher Maynard. Couldn't see anything on the lower, which is where I found them yesterday. That's not to say they won't tip up in a little while. The wind has significantly picked up, which could be deemed as a good thing, certainly not for float fishing, but maybe for getting them actually feeding. Anyway, there's definitely a group of fish down here now. I'm not going to change anything, tie new rigs. I'm just going to discreetly get two choddies out there. Give it half an hour, we'll have some breakfast, hopefully get a bite. If I don't get a bite now on these choddies, they're just too blatant. And I'm going to sort of switch things up to little solid bags with some pellet, maybe some corn. It doesn't look like they like choddies. Well, that's my excuse anyway. Um, I've had a couple out there. Every so often, a group of fish will drift in, but then drift out quite quickly. I'm almost worried that that blatant hook bait is what's stopping them from staying in the area. Uh, when I got here, there was some good ones there, man. So I don't really want to just give up yet. So I'm going to switch things up, put a little bottom bait rig out there, a little mesh bag of some two mil pellet in it, and see if we can trip one up that way. But yeah, they've been very, very difficult. <laughs> Well, as I mentioned, it was a full moon last night, or maybe it's tonight actually. Certainly looked like it last night, to be fair. Um, but yeah, and as well as them being the peak days, you also get peak hours within those days, um, based on this Solinar theory. And the Solinar theory is a funny one, really. It's um, a guy studied like a stupid amount of fish catchers and looked at all the different variables and the most two consistent variables were the movements of the sun and the moon. And from that he made a chart um, which you can actually get via an app. Um, well, there's multiple different apps actually. And basically I was just looking at that and we've got a peak time coming up from 12.30 till 3.30. And although I really want to get on my toes and go and find some carp, I've got to sit on me, <laughs> sit on my hands for now because I've just, well, about an hour ago I saw another one. It was over that other side there, but sort of about 90 yards along the bank, but kind of jumped out that way and looked like it was heading down this vicinity. I didn't want to just launch a pop-up across to it because that would have potentially, you know, mean that there was a line going all the way across that bay and any fish coming towards that bay might have spooked off that line, so I thought I'm better off just sitting back um, with the traps that I've got set and hopefully 
we're going to move in. Um, spoke to Alan, sounds like he's having a fun time, having lots of missions around the place. Uh, but yeah, obviously you've seen what's going on there, so I don't need to talk about that. But I'm going to keep plugging away here, I'm going to sit through this peak period. Um, well, I'll give it to at least two and then see what's happening. I'll keep you posted. Come on, what you got for us? Please, I keep just thinking about one of these big, dark, lovely mirrors in the bottom of my net. Um, keep the buzz alive. There are some really cool ones in here. There used to be a lot of big ones in here, actually. It was quite a good 30s water many years ago. Um, a lot of people used to come up here in the winter. Corrigan is a brutal place to be in the winter. One bleep. Go on in. I need more than that. That is me done. <laughs> We have got an almighty challenge ahead of us for this session. I am going to be joined by Alan Blair, the terminator of carp fishing, and I'm definitely going to need his skills for this session. One more take. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. That is me done. We've been gifted an incredible opportunity to fish a second night on this complex. But as much as my power barrow is still on green and it's got loads of battery, I actually haven't. Um, we had two, three hours sleep last night. We got up at half five and I haven't stopped since all day. So 12 hours in the heat, round and round and round and round. Had one half decent opportunity uh, on the higher. And other than that, I've not even managed to get any fish feeding on floaters. Um, the fish are dispersed now through the copper mill. So as much as I was going to flip the film on its head and just say, oh, let's just make a film about fishing the copper mill stream. Even that's proving problematic and difficult. Um, yeah, I can make all the excuses in the world, the birds, the heat. I haven't made it happen. Um, nor has Joe. <laughs> Joe's pulled off the Warwick. Uh, he's done sort of nearly 24 hours on there. Um, he's gonna stay on another night. Big ups, Joe. You can pull this out of the bag, mate. Go and catch from seven of the lakes <laughs> in the next 24 hours. Um, for me, I'm going to leave it at that and hopefully come back um, at some point in the future and do this all again with Joe. I've absolutely loved it. I've loved visiting the place for the first time. I've seen some really, really incredible carp. Um, it's a great complex. But yeah, I'm going to leave it now, go home with a big smile on my face um, and look forward to the next session back out with Joe. Hopefully doing this all over again. <laughs> Well, you have to excuse my barnet. It's getting a bit out of hand, isn't it? It's this wind. <laughs> Not that you care. Um, right, so, gave it till about four o'clock or something on the West Warwick, and in the end, I just thought, ah, oh, I was just getting burnt, to be honest with you. It was so bright and uh, hot and oh, uncomfortable. Um, so, yeah, I was like, right, packing up, and then went down, met Alan. Alan was totally burnt out. Um, I didn't have him down as a quitter, but yeah, he's bottled it out. Bottled out on me, should I say. Um, the last time I come here to do something like this was, was, was Daryl Peck, and he left after 24 hours as well. I don't know what it is with these lightweights. <laughs> I'm still running on 15 minutes sleep. Um, so I'm still up for the challenge, obviously. Not gonna complete them all, but even if I can just catch one, that'd be a result. Um, so I've come up to the higher Maynard, had a look in this little corner where Alan said he saw some fish earlier, and saw a small one on the bottom just tearing it up. Well, that'll do for me. So I've dropped in a little solid bag and then one single hook bait down to the right here. And uh, yeah, we'll give it an hour here and see what happens. Oh, it'll be really nice to winkle one out. I don't care how big it is. Just want a carp. Trying, I'm trying. Well, how's about that for a new vista then? I thought, well, seeing as Alan's bottled out on the challenge, maybe we should come back another time and attempt that when the weather's a bit better. So I thought I'd take advantage of the situation of being able to do the night on here and uh, I've come up to the Lockwood. Fancy me chances. I don't really mess with fancy me chances at all, but it's a full moon. There's a common in here, which I class as probably the best one in the country. Big, round, black. 
amazing looking old creature, um, which sort of normally around, well, between 45 and 46 pound, I think. Obviously probably spawned out at the moment, but I wouldn't care how big it was. If I could catch that one, then it would be a dream come true. And you know, the universe works in strange ways. Put a bit of effort in the last couple of days without any joy. Um, baited this area up yesterday when I got here. Who knows, the wind's been pushing up here since last night, which was a new wind. And yeah, like I say, the area's been prepped. Full moon tonight, come on the big common. Happy days. Imagine that, imagine that. Even if I had a stocky out of here, I think I'd crack myself. <laughs> but you never know, if I could catch one out of here tonight, drop on to the lower in the morning, then maybe the higher. <laughs> no chance, just gonna enjoy me fishing. We've got another front row seat for a sunset. So uh, yeah, enjoy the evening. Lovely times. Right, well, I sat on Lockwood um, contemplating my sanity and I thought to myself, I can't end this feature on a blank. So I thought, why am I on this lake? It's like a proper needle in a haystack. Um, all right, the universe is good to me sometimes, but that is asking a lot. That's like asking for a lottery ticket to win the current 190 million jackpot. <laughs> all right slightly different circumstances but s s ridiculously slim chances so yeah it got to about 10 o'clock and I thought no no this is madness I don't I don't need to be here <laughs> so even though I was super tired and just needed sleep I was just like no let's go up to that pipe on the higher now this pipe is a spot I always look at and think yeah, this has got to be a good area. So I always put bait in it, but I've never fished it. In fact, I don't think I've really fished a higher before. Um, but yeah, the couple of times that I've been wandering around the complex, I've always put a bit of bait into here. And I thought, right, well, I'm just going to head there and put some rods out. I think I've got a much more chance of getting a bite there just because it's such a sort of key feature in the lake. You know, it's pumping out water all the time, all the oxygen, and they love the flow and everything else. So. I thought I'll just come up here and there's got to be a chance of a bite there at night. So when I got here, I stood here for about five minutes and a couple of little splashes like trout or something. Oh, bosh, another one. And then uh, a couple of carp showed, then another carp showed, then another carp showed, and basically like it looked like it was game on. So I put three rods out in the vicinity, um, two on bags and one on just like a single IB. And I uh, got my head down, mega moon this this evening, it was rising over the buildings, it just looked incredible. Um, so yeah, I finally got my head down at 20 past 11, and remember I was still only on 15 minutes sleep. Um, at half 12, whee! Uh, proper old scrap, and uh, yeah, it was a nightmare to be honest with you. net fell apart as I was like, playing it in, and the other ones just rolled, and then, um, yeah, so I was trying to kind of scoop it up with the net, it's kind of not set up properly. I thought, no, this is ridiculous. So I had to kind of hold the rod and set up the net. And yeah, it was a proper palaver. I thought, I'm going to lose this after all that. But I didn't. We got it in the net, and it's a, a common of about, uh, about 20 pound, I reckon. So uh, yeah, let's have a quick look at them, shall we? Buzzing! Well, classic cliche here. I was just about to get that one out of the net. Just like buses, one of the other rods rips off. And uh, yeah, this is the culprit. Probably about 16, 17 pound. Lovely clean common. 
there's not a stupid head of fish in here but there's more than I thought that's for sure and uh, apparently a lot of them are commons so uh, <sighs> yeah I'm not complaining very happy to see him after the way the session's been going and uh, obviously what's it now I think it's about one o'clock now and I'm on an hour and 15 minutes sleep for the last uh, two nights well we'll see a night and a half so what are we going to do well I think I'm actually going to play the sensible card and get two hours sleep and then oh, three hours sleep get up at first light and see if we can find some on the lower and see if we can catch one out of there and then hopefully get one out of there and get over to one of the other lakes blinding right thank you for your visit mr carp legend well this one is definitely a bit bigger and a bit older no monster but a classic old wolf on stoke common looks ancient to be honest with you it's got that cool little swirly mark down there as well <laughs> yeah funny little sort of pug nose big old tail <sighs> smells old as well <laughs> oh yeah he does <laughs> oh well chuffed with him definitely 20 plus that one all right we're going to get him back and then uh yeah like i say a couple of hours kip and then we'll get on the lower so we can find someone there and we'll continue this mission because we've still got a full day at it tomorrow so you never know might be able to tick one or two more off the list yet. Sweet. Cheers, bro. Nice to meet you. Yo, yo, yo. Well, so, I didn't bother going back to bed last night. I thought, why are you going back to bed now? You might as well just get your kit on your barra and try and find some fish now rather than getting up at 4.30 and then having a look for fish and then casting out and blah, 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 blah. So, wandered around for about half an hour before I heard two out in the middle here. So, uh, yeah, flicked three rods out there, three single pop-ups and I crashed out because I was so tired but I set my alarm for 4.40 because I wanted to get the sunrise I thought I'll get the sunrise I'll go back to bed you know I'm so tired all right so it wasn't till about 3.20 before I went to sleep and then 4.40 alarm goes off phone alarm uh, so I literally turn that off, look round, think, wow, oh, look, it's lovely colour in the sky. And then, <laughs> where the rods goes. And then uh, as I'm playing that in, I get a funny twitchy take on one of the other rods. And uh, it's a bit strange, to be honest with you. But anyway, when afterwards, I picked up the, the rod, like once I got the other fish in and there, and started winding it in and yeah the <laughs> fish on <laughs> so we've got two mirrors in the net which is a mega result uh, again i think it's mostly commons in here so two one of them looks like a proper old crusty one well there's the first one bit of an old character a bit bent and twisted funny old dorsal all the way it ends there as well there's loads of wrinkly little lines all over him i reckon he's good sort of 24 pound I actually didn't bother bringing my scales with me on this trip. I wanted to uh, cut my gear right down to the bare minimum. And I thought, if it comes to it, I'll get a set of scales. But yeah, it's not too important, is it? Just blooming happy to catch them. What a mega result. That's crazy, that. Can't believe it. Happy days. And we've got another one as well. Two lots of buses in, two, in one night. <coughs> crazy times. Go on, mate, we'll get you back now.
Well, check him out for a mega old crusty Wolfenstow warrior. Mad looking thing, that sunken eye, crazy dinosaur looking back. He's got like weird white marks on him, little black dots. Crazy old school looking carp. Well chuffed for that, what a crazy night's fishing. Four fish after having that struggle on West Warwick. As always, it's just a case of getting on fish, find fish. You know, don't sit there waiting. I have to tell myself this all the time. <sighs> Wicked, right, I think I've got about an hour in time I'm allowed out, and then I'm gonna get over the other side and see if we can find an opportunity over there. Buzzing, yeehaw! Have a glorious day too, mega. Right, before putting it back, I've got to show you the other side because didn't even realise, but look, he's got no peck. <laughs> <laughs> on that side and look at them crazy markings as well <laughs> what a character he's got to be a known fish I'm going to ask a few people today <laughs> wicked right then old boy we're going to get you back right so I come straight over to the two this morning and there was a few little bubblers in the first bowl so I flicked a couple out but literally, you could tell it was getting so hot that that was the end of the feeding spell. And yeah, me casting signified that, <laughs> to be sure, to be sure. Um, so I've come up here and got the one this side and the three that side. And there's a few fish milling around out here, not too far out on the three. Um, and out here, there's been a few on the top and a couple of little bubblers. Um, but yeah, so I've just flicked a zig out there. Um, I felt the drop and counted it down and so it's probably about nine foot I reckon so I put about seven and a half foot zig on there so it's a little bit below to try and prevent foul looking the ones that are right on the top you know um, so yeah it's, it's boiling up but thankfully I've got a lovely bit of shade today um, feeling quite confident of getting one out of here to be honest with you I mean there's quite a lot of carp in here so surely if I can get a little zig bait in amongst their, them in front of their face. So you just have to excuse me, I'm extremely sleep deprived. Um, and yeah, there's a chance. I just put a little Alfie Russell uh, Billingsgate pop up on there. He gave me them the other day. Um, in fact, when I saw him, I forgot to mention that, I saw him on the lower and he caught this absolutely cracking mirror. Um, probably a mid 20 or something like that, but jet black, big scales down here. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely one. And he was showing me some of his other pictures of the fish that he's had out of there. Um, so yeah, some real cool carp. This complex is unreal, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, today, I don't think there's anyone else fishing here. Um, it's what, 20 minutes from the M25. Uh, so yeah, easy accessible. Day tickets are, you know, reasonably priced. I think they're 15 quid a day or something like that. But look what you've got access to. A massive variety of waters. I think it's something like eight different lakes, the river, um, and probably 40 pounders in most of those lakes as well. So yeah, if you fancied having a go down here, I highly recommend it. Great complex, always love the place. And some mega old carp, what more could you want? Right, I'm gonna uh, sit down here and will this rod to go. <laughs> common probably sort of about 17 I reckon it's quite nice quite plain um, the mat is buried under all my gear and I want to get on mission so we're not going to get him out it's boiling hot day as well so yeah we'll just let him back but what a result number one ticked off the list just the two and the three to go over here. There's no way I'm gonna do the Warwick and the Lockwood, but if I could get one more, Greedy Joe would be super happy. See you later, mate. Muchas gracias. Right, it's now about 11 a.m. and we're on the three. 
there's a group of probably like 10 to 15 fish milling around this area but it's ridiculously shallow out here um, I've just had pop-ups out there for the last sort of 30 minutes or so 40 minutes and um, yeah I don't know I just wasn't really feeling it. it's probably more than that actually it's probably more like an hour so I thought right I'll wheel them in get the lines out of the way and I've just put out a tiny little short zig which is about that long and the pop-up is just under the surface it's like literally an inch under the surface um, just you know I don't think they look like they really want to drop down and feed but something just in front of their faces I think could be tempted uh, could tempt one, you know. Um, there's one area out there in particular that they seem to like. When the gulls go over, they spook. Um, I don't know whether there's a bit of weed out there or something. And then there was a couple appeared just short out here that looked bang up for a floater. So I tried a single look bait to start with and they just laughed at me like they do. And then I put out a few floaters and loads of gulls appeared. So laughed that one off straight away. Mm. I reckon there's, this could be a good chance, this. And there's some big fish about as well, some big old shapes out there. See what we can do. Oh, it's too hot though, I need to find some shade. This is going to be my last port of call today. Been pretty busy to be fair after the three, and they looked a little bit spawny on there, and yeah, just wasn't feeling it. So I had a little look down the copper mill. And I, first of all, I looked down where Adam was fishing, and there was only one up there. And then a bit further along here where the bridge is, and there's an inlet. There was two hiding under the brambles, and one uh, that just came out of the cabbages and sort of drifted about. Love seeing them in this clear water, it looks so cool. Anyway, so I've come to the conclusion that there's a lot of them somewhere, so I reckon they're up here, which is an area that you can't actually fish. It's got a massive inlet, so it's constantly um, oxygenated all the time, you know, and on these hot days, obviously they absolutely gag for that, and that's why you see them around these inlet pipes, you know, just sort of literally trying to get their head in the pipe because they, they just love the oxygen and they love the flow as well. So this, to me, has got to be the place where they're hiding, surely. So I've actually bushwhacked two up there. When I fished it in the past, you have to kind of side cast it and it's really tricky and if you make, you know, one or two bad casts, that's probably enough to spook them. So about 18 sections, I think, 17 sections, pushed them up there, one on each side, uh, a bag on there just so that you know obviously if I just put bait in the spoon it would come flying down the river so the bag's going to take that to the bottom and then it will spread out from there. Yeah, I'm quite confident that if something's going to happen it will happen in an hour or so. So uh, yeah, I might have a little, I don't know, coffee or power nap? Coffee, power nap. Might have to toss a coin. <laughs> Yeah, I've never actually caught one out of here, I've only ever done a couple of little uh, hour or two hours here and there. So that's why I fancied having a go, obviously Alan had already ticked this one off. I considered going up the Warwick, but it's still blistering hot, there's no shade up there and it's a mile walk to where I was fishing. So I don't think I've got that in me after two and a half hours sleep and everything else for the first like, two nights. So <sighs> just going to have a chill out here in the shade and then if nothing happens, be happy that I've worked hard, had a good result, and uh, yeah, go home and have a lovely weekend. Dave, want a brew, mate? Sam, milk two sugars, yeah? Sweet. Dave, fancy a brew, mate? Yeah? What do you fancy, mate? I've got some uh, lovely pucker herbal teas, a little bit of uh, ginger, turmeric, lemon. No, don't fancy that one. What about a bit of night time? No? Builders? Builders? What else have we got? Oh, I've got some lovely skinny latte frappes. Yeah, I can do your chocolate sprinkles on the top, marshmallows, a bit of uh, chocolate sauce, you know, if you want a bit more of a mockery style thing. Um, or I can make you a super duper turbocharged coffee with me aeropress. 
Dave, if you've ever never had a coffee like it, mate, you'll be running to the toilet with in no time. Yeah, fancy one of them? Coming up. Right, well, I've had a few. Uh, the most dangerous one I've had was at Ashley Pool. And uh, I'd caught uh, the record from the lake at 32.12 in 1977. And I fished there a couple of times later on after that. And I remember I was up a tree, I was up about 30 feet, 25 feet, up a willow. And the willow had been broke one winter and it was splitting off. So the bow was, was going to the water and the other half of the tree was stood upright. And so I was up, as I say, about 20 to 30 feet. And I was so excited directing Jeff Booth to the fish that I just caught at 32, but it looked it might have been a bit bigger. And I was getting really excited and I was walking further and further out in the branch and all of a sudden I'd snap. I'd come crashing down through the trees and I was grabbing branches as I was coming down and I hit the bow of the tree on the middle of my back, which spun me over in the lake. Jeff Booth was about at least 50 to 100 yards away from me. I had waders on. And by the time I surfaced, all you could see was this long, big ring around me with my hat floating off in the distance. And I couldn't get out of the lake because I had these waders on that were full up. So he pulled me out of the lake thinking my back was severely injured. Basically, and I said, oh, my back's all right. And he said, oh, I'll have to have a look at it. So he pulled me, and all I had was a little graze on my back. Wow. But that was probably the worst fall I've ever had. But I've had untold falls falling out of trees. There's three reasons for climbing trees. Number one, observing fish. Number two, observing people. That means good anglers and bad anglers all alike. Not to be nosy and, and, and try and see what they're up to, but seeing where they're casting, see how much bait they're putting out. Because if they catch a fish, especially from a person that don't know very much, if he catches a fish somewhere where you think you wouldn't be putting a bait, now you know somewhere you can put a bait. And number three is for falling out of them, sometimes on purpose. And the reason for that is that then I can have a swim about in the lake so I can find out what's going on. They're the three reasons for climbing trees. Uh, other calamities, well, oh, again, excitement. I was uh, fishing at Redmart, it had been raining all week, and I had a change of clothes for every day. And on the Saturday, I was on my last change of clothes, going home on the Sunday. So I put some bait in underneath this willow tree down in the shallows. And then I've got there, I can see this tail whoop off. Whoa, wow. So I've got up the tree light, like, and it's a great big common. It's about 20, 28, 30 pounds. And I'm getting so excited, and it's moving around. And it's going to have some more bait. And as I'm walking out, it just blows straight in. Right, that's my last set of clothes. So what did I do? Some viewers might like this, some viewers might not. So what do I do? I'll get in my car, drive down to Ross on Y, go into a camping shop, and I say, have you got any waterproof clothing? So I'm sealing all my wet clothes. I said, do you mind if I change? So I said, no, no problem. So I give me wet clothes in a bag, and I'm walking back through Ross on Y with these new, and they were green, light green in colour, but people were looking at me. All strange. I thought, what's going on? And I looked down, I could see that I was actually naked underneath. They could see right through the clothing. <laughs> so that was quite an embarrassment for some people, not for all, <laughs> especially for me. And I suppose that was, uh, that's probably about it, really, as calamities go. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head at the minute. Uh, off, oh, well, uh, this was back in my drunken days. I went to Redmar a few years ago uh, as an invite, but I was an alcoholic then, and I wasn't really fishing like I am today. And uh, it was in, in my 27 years of being away from the game, but I still got invited to certain places, but I weren't going as Richie McDonald then. And uh, anyway, I took my uh, Johnny Walker's grandsons. And... Um, because when I knew them, they were in that eye. Now they're big men and they're fishermen. So they said, oh, would you be able to take us a red mine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm drinking all the way down there. I'm drinking while I'm there. Mr. Richardson, hello, Mr. Richardson, all right, there's bloody, bloody, blah, all the malarkeys. And then uh, I was standing in the evening swim and I, I said, look, this is where I caught a straight in the lake. 
I just slipped on this new bit of board in it, and that was probably what you can call a calamity. And I just stood there at Carson. What are you doing down there? I said, well, I fell in, didn't I? Uh, yeah, if you weren't drinking. Uh, anyway, I was, so I did. Uh, right. Oh, another Red Mar Pool one. I, I wouldn't say it's a calamity, but it's a, a near danger one. Right. When I was in the syndicate, this is before my drinking days, when I was in the syndicate, uh, you weren't allowed on the lake if you saw the bull. You had to wait in the car until Mr. Davis, the farmer, come and got the bull. It had a great big ring for its nose and everything. It's very naughty, this bull. And so basically, the cows used to love licking the mesowicks off the uh, mesowax off the bivvies. All right. So what you do, you give the, give the bivvy a slap like that and, and go away, probably. Anyway, and uh, wasn't like the stuff what we got today. This was uh, made from uh, Alfred Ball as a tent maker and uh, just a round circle bivvy thing. And uh, we, Pete Springgate had one as well. And we used to measure wax and we had a special wax that you use every year. It's just like putting paraffin on the bivvy. It stunk like the whole heaven. Anyway, I've laid down on the bed chair one day and all of a sudden, <laughs> give it a slap. Give it another slap. <laughs> oh, what the bloody hell's going on? So I've got this, uh, well, not this particular, anyway, I've got a mallet out and I'm laying on the bed and I whack. I thought, hey, hang on a minute. So this time I've got off the bed on my knees. I've walloped it, right? It's still licking it up. So I got out. It was, I got out. See, it was the bull. Jumped in the lake and shouted like, Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis, the bull is out. And I stayed in the lake until he come and got it. And he come and got Put the old chain round its ring and pulled it away. Uh, so that was a calamity of a dangerous sort. Because that bull would kill you. Uh, the reason it didn't attack me is because I jumped in the lake. If I if I was going to try and shoot it away, it would have attacked me. So Mr. Davis said, "I think it's about all on calamities that I can think of." Yo yo yo! Right, we're back down Longreach after a month off. My last session here was gone Queen's Day, and. I kept joking about catching the Queen of the Lake on Queen's Day, um, but that was obviously me just being a little bit greedy. However, the Queen of the Lake did come out once again next door to me. Um, a lad called Liam caught it. He's been fishing here the last couple of years and that's the one he really wanted, so fair play to you, Liam. Well done, mate. It was spawned out sort of 42, I think, and it's actually been out again since as well. Um, it's funny with that fish, I've seen it like four times on the bank now and I was talking to a guy, Matt, down here about it before and we were saying like the more you see them with other people, the kind of less desirable they become. <laughs> but that, out of the big ones in this lake, that was the one I was kind of least worried about anyway, but obviously I'd still like to catch it. Um, but I'm not going to put my life and soul into catching that one. However, obviously there's the friendly still to play for, but there has been a rumour that that one's come out as well on the weekend of our little mini festival that we do, um, which was like the first weekend after I pulled off of it. Pretty typical, eh? <laughs> um, but hasn't been 100% confirmed yet. No one's actually seen a photo, but apparently the guy did have it. Um, but I'm just kind of hoping maybe it wasn't the friendly, maybe it was one of the other bigger commons in here. So, um, yeah, apart from that, there's still a few others in here I'd quite like to catch, so having another little go. This was an unplanned trip, to be honest with you. I just thought um, to myself today, right, I could do with getting some more shots to go with my diary piece of the brown. Um, and I thought, whilst I'm up here, I'm going to do uh, a little interview with Gordy about the place, which probably would have been on last month's issue. Um, and I thought well, I might as well combine it with a couple of nights. So, um, you know, dropped onto long weeks, dropped into the beach, had a good look about, but didn't see any signs of any fish. So the main reason I've gone in here, if I'm perfectly honest, is because I put quite a lot of bait in here a month or so ago, well, over a month now, obviously, um, over a couple of weeks when we were giving them a break for spawning. So potentially you know they've been using that area i'm sure other people are probably fishing this in so it's probably seen a bit of bait so yeah just going on on that really but also this swim gives me a fantastic view um and at the moment it's giving me a view of the seagulls working that blooming weed bed along that bank and making me think i should be over there so 
it's too late now. Well, it's not too late to move, but I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm happy with that spot, the way I'm fishing it. So we'll give it a night in here. Lovely view in the Royal Box um, for the morning. And yeah, we'll go from there. But aside from that, it's time I had a bit of a munch. Chicken burger tonight. Happy days. Well, um, we had a bit of a move this morning because it was very quiet up the beach. Nothing showing up there whatsoever. And in the evening, as I mentioned, you know, I was watching all the gulls working this line of weed, um, which runs sort of about, probably about 250 yards long, to be honest with you. Runs all the way along this bank. It's about 10 yards wide. Um, and it ends here in the last swim, just out to the left here. It looks pretty thick. So I imagine they're probably, you know, maybe using either side of it, but not going through it that much. So I thought if I can get on the end of it, then that's got to be a good option. Um, and I did, well, I'm pretty sure I saw one. Obviously, it's very hard because it's probably, I don't know, 600 yards or something like that. But pretty sure I saw a big splash out the other side of this weed bed this morning. Um, so, yeah, the wind's blowing down here. It's meant to swing a bit later on, so it's coming more in this corner. And I did like the area, look at this area yesterday, but there was another guy who said he was going to come in here. So um, that's why I went up the beach, but he ended up going on the end bank. So I've come into here. Um, just flicks two singles out for now. Got a nice drop on the end of that weed. It's probably in about six to eight foot of water. Um, and then just out to the right here as well. Lovely crack down. Um, yeah, just two single look baits going back to my old faithful kind of long reach tactics really, rather than messing about, trying to find spots, making disturbance, putting bait out and all that. Just single look bait, you know, where I think it needs to be. Um, so yeah, feel quite confident, looks good, fingers crossed, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> see if Simon Kenny was still here to see if he had a life jacket in his car. You know what, I've always got a life jacket in my car, but the other week I cleaned it out like thoroughly and um, yeah, took a load of stuff out. First time in ages and I've forgotten to put that back in. <sighs> I don't know what to do to be honest with you. It hasn't pulled itself out, it's been at least 10 minutes now. Um, not seen any kicks on the rod tip. All I can do is try and give it a little bit more, I guess. I don't want to lose it. It felt like a big one. It felt powerful. Um, maybe there's a life jacket on the shallow. Yeah, I'm going to have to run up there and I'll be back. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's have one more little go first. All right, don't pull hard too hard, Joe. Why are you pulling the trousers out? They're already soaked in Muppet. Alright, be patient, be patient. Solid. Oh, it's kicking. Come on, mate, kick yourself out. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Oh, it's definitely still on. That's good. Come on. 
No. It's not having it. Go and see if there's a life jacket on the shallow. <laughs> right, life jacket sorted. Uh, yeah. Wish me luck. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hoping it's still on, and hopefully it's just a case of getting behind this weed bed and above it. She's out of the weed. Oh, this is where it gets hairy. <sighs> well, I mean, that is a strong and powerful fish. Myself, but, uh... Ah, the fish is in the net. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> we got one. Um, well, it's not the monster I thought it was. Blimey, the power of this thing. Unblooming real. <sighs> buzz, proper buzz. I reckon I run about a mile in total, so I add up all the way down there, back to here, all the way around there, and then all the way around the uh, shallow to get this life jacket. But it was that or probably lose the fish, so, and a bit of exercise don't hurt, does it? But we're talking about someone who doesn't do jogging, doesn't do running, doesn't do any cardiovascular. So if I have a heart attack um, on camera, well, I'll say goodbye now. <laughs> <sighs> right, I reckon he's sort of, I don't know, haven't had a good look at him. Low 20 comment, something like that. But the power was just ridiculous. Towing me around. As soon as he popped out of that weed, that was it, he was off. 
I thought it was going to be one of them big ones, but um, there you go. You never know what you got on the end of the line, mate. <laughs> <sighs> Mega result, though. Um, there's been a lot of people doing a lot of nights around here for very little, so that is a major result to catch that one. I'm absolutely soaked, but chuffed to bits. one this is and it's one that I've not caught one that I wanted to catch because it's uh, quite a character just give me a quick wave and then I'll show you but uh, yeah you'll certainly see why it was able to fight so hard <sighs> so that's about 23 and three quarters Look at the tail on that. No wonder he fought so hard. Blimey. Mega. I don't think he's got a name this one, but he certainly needs one, don't he? Saw a picture of it. Um, I think the last time it came out was a couple of years ago in the autumn. And uh, yeah, that's the only picture I've seen of it. So, mega, mega carp. Lovely, dark, purple, long reach cracker. I can't get over how mad that tail is. <laughs> it's insane. 15 minutes in the right spot. Good old single ID. Done the business again. <sighs> Ye old faithfuls. Still got the old spawning tubercles on, so it's definitely a, a boy this one, isn't it, mate? Crack. Wicked. <laughs> Buzzing. I won't lie to you, that was a buzz and a half, that one. Um, totally out of the blue. Literally, the rods have probably only been out about 15 minutes, I reckon. I love that, you know, like, say it to yourself all the time, but say it to myself all the time. You know, you waste so many days just sitting on spots and then, you know, you just flick a single look bait out where you think there might be fish going on the conditions or what you've seen and whatever. And it can happen just like that, you know, sort of rock hard lakes can can become, you know, not so rock hard. Um, and I think there's so much in that with them single look baits. And I've talked about it time and time again, so I won't go on, <laughs> but yeah. Um, and also I find it's, you know, much more enjoyable way of fishing as well, because um, yeah, you're just sort of not committing to spots so much. I said that, I've been having a little mooch about and um, yeah, I haven't seen any any other signs. So I'm thinking, well, it's a good chance I've spooked them out of this area because of that fish, you know, it was literally towing me around this bay to the right. So um, yeah, I imagine that might push them out. However, if they want to be here, I think they'll be back, you know. And also the wind's going to swing around a little bit more this evening. It's going to be coming more into this corner um, at a much better angle. So, yeah, I'm still confident there's a chance, another chance um, to be had out of this swim. I think that, you know, that little um, that drop I got on that left-hand rod on the end of that weed line, that felt prime. And obviously the drop on the right-hand rod you know, like at the time, I did have a couple, two or three casts, um, but yeah, each of them went down equally as hard. Um, quite an interesting area, to be honest with you. Not actually caught one out of this swim before, so yeah, it's always nice to tick another swim off the list. But yeah, how does anyone have the time to put their waders on when they get a bite? I just had to jump straight in, didn't even think about trainers or socks or anything. 
um, yeah, straight in there. And now, as a result, I'm suffering with the old damp foot syndrome. Um, but yeah, uh, sort of drying out in the sun. So hopefully I'll be all right. I did find one waterproof sock, so I've been having one waterproof sock on and one sort of damp foot. So might have to swap them up in a minute, you know, give the other foot a bit of a break. <laughs> Don't want to get a trench foot or nothing, do I? Um, so yeah, anyway, I think I'm going to do the night in here. So I'm going to get this absolute disgrace sorted out behind me here because there's just tackle everywhere as there normally is when I catch a fish and I'm not actually, you know, set up. <laughs> it's just <laughs> carnage. Um, and yeah, get some grub down me. And hopefully, might see a sign or two. But I think it's getting late afternoon now, so. Hmm, looks like it's going to be a nice evening. What have we got on the menu? So, uh, pasta and pesto. Sounds good to me. to report to be honest with you I don't even know why I turned the camera on <laughs> um, yeah not seen anything not heard anything um, I've had a little wander up and down the bank this morning trying to look for signs but no they're not really giving themselves away um, I'm gonna give it what's it about eight o'clock now I think I'm gonna give it until probably about nine nine thirty um, and then get packed up and I want to head over and do some filming on some of the other lakes. Just got to get some shots of uh, a few different angles of a few of the different lakes on the complex. So, um, yeah, I wanted to get the drone up, but it looks like it might be a little bit windy for that today. Um, but we're still in bite time now, and I don't, know, I don't really perceive this as a nighttime area as such. So I'd imagine, you know, if they were going to be creeping in here, it would probably be about now. Obviously, I had that one yesterday about midday, um, but kind of got this feeling that I spooked them out of it yesterday. Obviously, getting dragged around in that boat in this area didn't do me any favours, but got the fish in, so that's what matters the most. Um, but yeah, it's a nice breeze today and a bit of cloud cover, so it does still feel pretty carpy, to be fair. Just um, could do with seeing one. Hopefully one of these is just going to absolutely melt out of the blue. Um, I need to try and get my waders on this time or at least take my shoes off because it's a bit cooler today. I don't really fancy the old uh, trench foot on a day like this. <laughs> right, aside from that, as I say, not much to talk about really. Um, I've got a little festival that I'm playing at this weekend down at Castle Goring on the south coast so that should be good fun and then uh, yeah we're camping down there for the weekend a bit of beach action on the Sunday and then uh, next week hopefully I'm going to be out filming with Alan Blair at Walthamstow but it's looking like it's going to be like, like 30 odd degrees uh, not a lot of wind so I reckon as well as being extremely hard, you know, in the heat, um, it could be hard fishing too. But hopefully we're going to be able to do a night or two. So, um, yeah, that might be the edge that we need. Right, well, anything happens, I'll keep you posted. Right, now, I know I don't really go into too much detail as far as rigs and technical stuff are concerned on carp angle um, just because I think there's so much of that elsewhere but I do get a lot of people message to say can you show me how you use your spinner rig um, now, again the reason I probably don't go into too much depth on that is because I don't use it much differently to everyone else um, but there are a couple of little key 
components or aspects of it, if you like, that I find are kind of crucial to make the rig work as well as it can. Um, I've seen some other people's versions and yeah, there's a couple of little pieces that definitely limit the movement of the hook. So first of all, the actual ring swivel on the eye of the hook. Now some of these just come with like a, a metal kind of screw that goes into the bait but that's all as one there's not a, a ring on that so it, it just doesn't have that same sort of turning potential you know with one of these little uh, ring swivels on with a screw into the bait little plastic screw there then you get every little bit of movement that you could possibly wish for and the hook's able to spin round and do its job as efficiently as possible um, the other thing is I like to put a loop in the actual hook link so I don't mess about with crimps because well, it's just another thing you've got to carry and another thing that you've got to rely on. I'm quite happy with my knots so yeah I just tie a small figure of eight loop knot straight onto that swivel. Um, that one's had the ring cut off of it but to be honest with you I think I've had equal amounts of success with the ring on or the ring off. As far as um, the boom's concerned, I use 20 pound IQ for most of the time to be honest with you. And I find that that's kind of stiff enough to prevent it from casting, but also supple enough that it will settle even if it, you know, if the lead was to plug into some silt, then this is still going to sit over and settle down nicely on that. None of this stiff boom business popping up, um, you know, if it doesn't land particularly well. Then I've got an anti-tangle sleeve on there, um, which goes onto a lead clip. Now, a lot of people will fish these on a helicopter system, and I do sometimes, but generally I prefer to use a lead clip because I can use that for my solid bags. I know it's against the grain, <laughs> but they work perfectly fine in a solid bag. Um, my zig rigs or my spinners, which is kind of the three main rigs that I find myself using for 95% of my fishing. So I haven't got to mess about changing leaders over or anything like that. I can just clip all of those straight onto a leg clip. And um, I also think that the hooking efficiency of a leg clip is better than a helicopter. Um, so yeah, <laughs> again, I do get a lot of messages from people saying, what, you use a lead clip in a solid bag? Well, what's all that about? But I've had so much success on it, I don't see that there's any difference between that and in, in line really, because it's all about that little short hook link. Um, with regards to the length of the hook link, I, I like a little bit of length, to be honest with you, um, especially if I'm kind of just fishing for a drop, um, just allows that, an extra little bit to, for it to settle nicely and um, yeah I would say, so, say give, them, give them enough rope to hang themselves on and all that um, but sometimes if I'm fishing over bait with this rig on very clear spots then I will shorten it down to sort of about five inches or so um, just so that lead comes into play a lot quicker when they're not moving about so much you know if it's feeding on small particles whereas with a single hook bait or a spread of boilies i think a little bit of extra length um, can be a bit of an edge but also it enables you to see the gap between the hook bait and the lead when it's casting out when you're casting it out um, and obviously you know that just tells you what you need to know that it's not tangling um, but it shouldn't tangle anyway with that 20 pound iq um, obviously I always just sort of give it a little feather throughout the cast that separates the hook and the lead and uh, yeah, prevents them from getting all tangled up. But this for me is potentially, not potentially, 100% the most effective rig that I've ever used in carp fishing. Um, it ticks all the boxes, you know, the, the perfect pop-up presentation, um, just the right sort of height, so unable to, to spin round however it likes, which for me is a massive key for any rig. You know, I want that rig to work whichever way the fish approaches the bait from. Um, and yeah, it certainly works for me. A huge amount of confidence in this setup and huge amount of confidence in the old mainline IBs, which I've caught so many big fish on. It's a joke. Time and time again, they keep working. All right, there you go. Joey's spinner rig, nothing, uh, to out of the ordinary there. Oh yeah, 
most importantly, a super, super sharp hook. Um, that's a Kamakura on there, which I've been using quite a lot, but I also sharpen my own sometimes as well. I was doing that, or well, I still do that with um, the black jag file, but recently I've been using the Nash tool which has got a little motor in it and with that you know you can really really hone down the points stupidly sharp um, without too much effort at all so yeah it's good good little bit of kit that right back to watching the water something that was a little bit naughty that um I got away with, but it was, it was how this lake was fished. Uh, it's uh, known as the Cheshire Mere or the Deer Park Lake, um, very, very public lake with the deer running about and some 50 pound commons, uh, which for Cheshire is, is exceptional. And uh, the done thing then, the, the way it was fished was at night, you would sneak in under the cover of darkness into the uh, main park fish and then go leave at sort of four in the morning. 4.30, depending on how deep into the park you were, was, was how early you had to leave to uh, before the wardens came and unlocked a series of gates all the way around the lake. Anyway, in one morning, there, there was, I mean, there was half a dozen people every night there. There was a big, the second gate you had to go over, and um, it rattled as you went over it. And sometimes if you were fishing in the woods near there, somebody going over the gate would have no idea where you were, because it was pitch black and the woods were dense. Um, but you could hear like, the gate going once at 10 o'clock at night, then again, six times it'd go, and then four in the morning, you hear it go six times again as, as these anglers are coming back over it. So it is how the lake was fished. Uh, anyway, one night, I'd, I'd actually had a fish called Jim's Fish by this point, uh, it was, uh, one that went 58, I had it 48, and I've, I, I ended up cutting my finger on the gate on the way out, nearly losing a finger. I've got like a big scar all the way up the finger now. Um, so I had a week off, but the lad that took the picture of Jim's fish for me, obviously he's seen where I've caught it from, he's come down and took the picture, so he's fished in that swim for the week that I couldn't fish because I was bandaged up. And uh, uh, they'd had him and uh, another lad, Sam, they'd had three fish out of this swim while, while I was gone, but none of the really big ones, I think 30 pounds was, was the biggest, but by the time I got back to the lake, uh, it was, they felt it was their swim, you know, they caught a few fish. So I was looking for another swim further down the lake, but not too far from this area. And um, there was a spot, you had to go over the second gate into the main park, but uh, there was a big oak tree. Anyway, uh, Sam and Mark were fishing in my swim and I, oh, uh, and I was fishing under this oak tree. Normally I'd go and say hello to Mark, see what they caught on the way out in the morning. Anyway, I hadn't come past and they were just leaving. They were like, Jamie's uh, not come past. He would have said hello, surely. And they were right on the time where the wardens come in to unlock the gate. So they didn't want to hang about and they were like, look, we better go and check. They've walked over that gate, the second gate, found me fast asleep leaning up against the oak tree. My rods are still out in the water, my rucksack of stuff strewn everywhere around the swim. And then we look over, we can see the warden's uh, truck coming around the lake. And there's no way we can get away. Like there's nowhere to escape to. We can't move, we literally got to hide behind the tree. Anyway, as it approached, there was no time to get my rods in or anything. And we're about 10 yards from the track where, where this guy has to stop right behind us, get out the vehicle and unlock a gate. There was nothing we could do, put as many things as I could behind the oak tree out of sight. I didn't have a chance to get my rods in. I just took them off the pod, off the, uh, rests, slung them on the deck so it's lower, flatten the, the alarms and then literally as I'm doing this we had to hit the deck, all three of us, because they were they had their gear on them as well, a rod bag and a rucksack each, all three of us were face down in the dirt. I've never heard my heart beat so loudly in my head. If the guy looks right at any point he sees us. Uh, and but you can't look up, you can't, because you know, you know the routine, he's getting out of his car, he's unlocking the gate, and then he's gonna get in the car, you hear the car door shut and you'll hear him move again, and then you know you've got about three minutes, because what he does then is he drives up to a track, it's a dead end, he unlocks the gate there, turns round and drives back, and comes and has to drive past us again, there's, there's no other way round it, so I know I've got two minutes to maybe reel the rods in, and then we've got to hit the deck again. There's nothing else we could do. The only thing is this time on his way out, he doesn't have to stop because the gate's already open. Um, so 
everybody knows we can't even talk to each other but everybody knows uh, like this is the situation we've got two or three minutes now so that that's what happened we got away with it uh, as he drove past there was no better feeling than just hearing the, the the truck not slow down at any point and then just keep going past and um, we got away with it now every day is a school day the reason I started this feature was because we're constantly learning things in life and having to relearn them. And the topic I'm going to talk about today is something that I constantly have to remind myself. Um, but it's something not related to fishing, but it has been pretty beneficial for me in my life. So I thought I'd try and pass it on to some of you lot um, and hopefully you can benefit from it as well. Now, basically, the way I look at things is that our brain is just a computer, a really, really complex computer that's wired up for survival. Um, and it's full of viruses. And these viruses are all your experiences throughout your life. And that's all it has to relate things to. Um, and that's why you feel the way you felt during a bad situation when you're reminded of that bad situation if you like, so it's probably not the best way of putting it. However, what I try to get across to people, um, and it's something that someone sort of told me years ago, but it didn't really click, so I kind of had to come up with a new analogy, if you like, to try and uh, make people understand it a bit quicker. Um, and so basically the way I look at it is that your brain is a computer, um, however, you are the person sitting at the computer, and you are able to decide what you listen to and what you don't, if you like. And what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes, well, not sometimes, it's happening, it happens all the time, you know, your brain is constantly on one, do, 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 chucking up all these images and um, what have you. So if you just lay in the dark, well, you don't even have to lay in the dark, to be fair, you just shut your eyes in silence and observe what's going on, right? And all these things will be coming up, but rather than actually thinking about them and going into them, just let it pass. Okay, I've seen that, let it go. Next, okay, I've seen that, let it go. And then what you realise is that because you're observing these things, you're not actually able to create them. So you're not the creator of these thoughts, that's just your brain firing away like it does. Um, however, you realise that you are an observer of that and therefore you can't be creating them and therefore you have the choice as to how you react to these thoughts. Um, like it's quite deep, if you like, really, but it is a massive game changer in life if you can kind of get your head around that. Um, and we've all got like a three quarters of a second reaction time to everything. So when someone says something, you've got three quarters of a second to actually engage that observer and go, hang on, no, I'm not going to react in that bad way. I'm going to um, look at this from another perspective and control how I react to it. So it sounds quite simple. Um, and once you get your head around it, it is. And like I say, it then gives you the ability to go, well, that's not my thoughts. I'm not going to go down that path. <laughs> the other thing which is really important and a massive game changer is the understanding the fact that our brains can only feel fear or love at one time. Um, if you want, to apply that to positive and negative. And you can overpower one with the other. So if you're in a situation where you're feeling fearful, whatever that is, or negative, um, then try and feed yourself with positive thoughts instead and you can overpower that feeling. Um, you know, even simple things just like gratitude, you know, if, if we were um, a lot more grateful for what we actually had, then we'd be a lot happier. You know, we're always worrying about what we haven't got, but if you just like spend a little bit of time just being thankful for all the amazing things that we have got, you know, the sun, air, food, water, um, family, friends, all of these things, you know, there's be a massive list that you could um, sit there and think about. And that can overpower those negative feelings. So hopefully that's made sense. Um, and hopefully some of you can you know, glean a bit of uh, goodness from that information. Because like I say, it can be life changing um, once it clicks and you're able to, you're able to, you know, um, apply that to your life, 
then things can become a lot easier. And I'm constantly hearing of suicides at the moment. Um, it's really quite sad times, you know, like through Facebook, friends of friends networks. It seems to be such a regular occur occurrence at the moment and it just shouldn't be, you know, the amount of people who are left suffering um, when people do commit suicide. Um, they're the ones who really suffer. Um, but obviously, you know, if anyone's in that situation, just get out there and talk to people, you know. You can change the situation round. It is doable and there's a lot of people out there who love you and would support you if they knew that you were suffering. So, yeah, speak out. Yeah, I've got three rods on top of the bar, fish mill boilies. Scattered, sort of about a pound over the top. Homemade pop-ups. Yeah, so I've got um, one rod in a little depression down there. There's a, a little bit, it just dropped down to about six inches deeper and then comes up and yeah, there's a, a little bloodworm bed just at the back side of it. And I like to put my bait just in that depression. And um, on that, I've got a boilie, which I've been soaking, or should I say marinating for the last six months in this really new special super duper juice. Um, and then after three months, I'll take them out of the marinade, um, let them start to dry off a little bit, and then I add betaine, right? And then I'll leave that for about a week, and then I add some fish oil. And then I, w I want that oil to properly penetrate the bait, so I'll leave that on there for another couple of weeks or so before I add the uh, green knit mussel powder. Um, and I put loads of that in there, they, they love it, they love it. So what I'd like to do is add a bit of um, like a, a really strong, sticky, fishy liquid. Um, and then I coat the baits in that before adding my green knit mussel powder. Um, and obviously that just makes the green knit mussel just stick to them. It, it, it makes this ridiculously attractive coating on the outside. Um, so yeah, that's up to about three and a half months and then I'll dry them out. But I don't just dry them, like air dry them, I dry them out in Himalayan rock salt. And I don't just get the stuff off the shelf, I walk up the Himalayas to get it. You know, um, the stuff you get off the shelf just ain't the same. You know, you've got to be walking up that mountain and finding the freshest possible Himalayan pink salt high grade pink salt you can find. Um, but you're not actually allowed to take it, you know, so I have to smuggle that back. Um, but we probably shouldn't talk about that. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but anyway, you won't find any better salt than that. So I'll then soak them in that, like powdered obviously. That's the first process, powdered Himalayan pink salt and dug um, that I'll leave them to dry in that for about, I reckon about a month or so. Yeah, a month or so. Then I take them out and then I get a bucket of lake water and I wash them out. And I'll soak them in that lake water for like a month or so before I'm gonna use them. And there you have the finest bait on the planet. You heard it here first. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, that's it for another month, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that one. I still can't get over the fact that Alan bottled it and went home 24 hours early. Um, of all the people I thought would be you know, up for that challenge and able to keep going, you know, push through that, that levels of tiredness to complete the mission, it was Alan. But sadly, I was wrong. I was wrong. I'll tell you what, I'm definitely going to uh, be giving that one a go another time. Um, I'm sure it's doable. Potentially like Lockwood and West Warwick are going to make things extremely difficult. But I think the others, um, definitely possible. I think maybe if I'd done four days or something like that, I might be able to uh, pass the test. <laughs> but yeah, it is a hell of a challenge and it takes it out of you, that's for sure. We, uh, we've done a hell of a amount of steps around there. And also, 
obviously the heat was totally against us as well, but anyway, enough of the excuses. Alan's the one who needs to be making excuses, not me. <laughs> um, right, once again, massive thank you for all your contributions. Um, for those who are not aware, Carpe Angle relies on your contributions each month to keep it on YouTube. Obviously, I've got the option of moving it to a subscription, but I'd rather not do that because I like to be able to put good information out there to as many people as possible, so as many people as possible can benefit from it. I get a huge amount of messages from people who've said that you know this show has given them the buzz to get back out fishing and they're feeling so much better in themselves as a result of that. We all know fishing is amazingly good for our mental wealth and at the moment you know there's a lot of people struggling with mental health so if you've got any mates um, who are having a bit of a struggle up you know get them out fishing, get them out in the great outdoors talk you know talking so important in life but so many people just holding all their thoughts and feelings um, but yeah just literally getting it out makes you feel so much better right that's it for another four weeks then we'll be back and next month we've got a bit of a legend from the scene that is richie mcdonald 68 years old out fishing now every day every night absolutely loving it and the man has got an amazing amount of stories um, so many we could never fit him into one feature so yeah expect to see him next month and then probably in the future again right have a fantastic month um, we've got a festival in what three weeks time now a little weekender in Essex so if anyone fancies a bit of that primarily sort of house underground house and techno music lovely people it's all friends of friends um, so yeah, we, we have a zero tolerance towards any wallies. So if you're a wally, don't get in touch. But if you fancy a bit of that, this is a personal invitation. Uh, drop me a line on Instagram or something like that and I'll send you the ticket link. Um, whilst we're talking on Instagram actually, there must be so many of you who don't follow Carp Angle or my page. So uh, yeah, whilst you're watching this, get on your phone and give us a little follow because everything helps with all the algorithms and all that malarkey, which I don't even understand. <laughs> right, have a lovely month and I'll see you in four weeks time.